Hi guys, as promised, I think I'll just make this a short one. I thought about talking a lot more about my timeline and all the day counts I'm seeing into the future, but perhaps I should just break it up and not just have a bunch of miscellaneous stuff in one video. It just makes it easier for people to find what they are looking for on my channel. Since in my last video, Episode 6 in my series of puzzle pieces. I was laying out the Revelation 15 sign of the menorah in the heavens, which happened on the 313 date, and all the planets going through the waters of Aquarius during the 40 days leading up to the eclipse. I thought I'd show a few things surrounding this 313 date of John the Baptist's birth back in 3 BC. Since during that last eclipse, the sun was squarely on that line of the band of Pisces, I took a harder look at 313 on John the Baptist's birth date back in 3 BC, and found that the closer to midnight, the more squarely the sun was sitting on that band on the evening that John the Baptist was born. And it just makes sense to me that both Jesus and John were born when Israel was in total darkness. And when I backed out of Stellarium and looked to the waters of Aquarius, I instantly knew what God was about to show me. And many may wonder why I'm always looking at the waters of Aquarius. For one, it is the end of the age of Pisces and the start of the age of Aquarius right now. And it's because from the first page of the Bible to the very last page of the Bible, it's all about the waters. The waters are often symbolic of knowledge and it is where people seeking knowledge find God. From the story of Hagar to the Samaritan at Jacob's well. The women find God at the wells of knowledge, and the men seek their wives at those wells. It may also help in understanding how the waters can become as bitter as wormwood. We also have the story of Miriam's well, and what happened when Miriam died, and there was no more water only quarreling and strife. I'm not sure whether to talk about all this in my timeline video or what. Like I say, everything is all so tied together. But we do have a 333 day count here, which is Jesus' numbers. Just like the 333 day counts with both of Anna's blood moons, 84 years apart. And what exactly happened 333 days later, on both accounts? I've talked about it a lot already in my videos, but I think the next video in my Puzzle Pieces series is going to be covering just Anna's blood moons and the events involved, such as the attack on Israel on October 7th, exactly 333 days after Anna's second blood moon. These are not good signs. They are warnings of what's about to come. God bringing his hammer down in judgment. Miriam died on Nisan 10, exactly one year before Israel crossed over the waters of the Jordan, which means the descent. April 1st of last year of 2023 was Nisan 10, and the date Miriam died. It's also what led to Moses and Aaron not being allowed to cross over the Jordan. And Moses is also a big part of my day count, leading up to exactly Leap Day. As you can see here, if we start and include our count with Nisan 11, 
and through and including February 28th of 2024, then the 333-day judgment warning period gets us to leap day when the 40 days of Noah's flood of troubles and the filling of the seven vials of God's wrath began. If you do a search for wormwood in the Bible and read all those chapters, I think that the meaning of Revelation 8.11 should be clear with John's reference to wormwood. It's about knowledge and wisdom and God turns the waters of knowledge to bitterness as his judgment on those who fall off or stray from a righteous path. People like to quote Hosea 4, 6, my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. So that is also a good chapter to read for homework. Hosea chapter 4. If you do a search in the KJV for living water in the singular or plural, you see here that in the Old Testament, Jeremiah and Zechariah describe God as the fountain of living waters. In the New Testament, John is the only one who tells us that Jesus describes himself as the fountain of living waters, both when he talks to the Samaritan woman at Jacob's well and at the great eighth day of the Feast of Tabernacles in John chapter 7. And the waters are what John the Baptist was all about. The word baptism means to be fully immersed and that's what John was born for, to pave the way for Jesus by fully immersing as many as he could in the living word of God. So they would be able to recognize who Jesus was through all the fulfillment of the prophecies. If someone didn't know the scriptures, then how would they know if Jesus was the Messiah? I think it was one of the main beefs Jesus had with the Pharisees. If they knew the scriptures, then they should have recognized who he was. And many of them did, deep down, but weren't willing to let go of what they had going at the time. So we can see that all these signs God has been setting in the heavens for us have everything to do with John the Baptist and Jesus, their births, their being presented at the temple and named, and certainly Crucifixion Day, and even the dedication of our new temple. I decided to poke around some more on Stellarium. And since we've already backtracked a little around the dates that we've already pinpointed and looked at things like the anointing at Bethany, or maybe the triumphal entry date, I decided to have a look at John the Baptist. So let's just look at John the Baptist's first day, and the day he would have been presented at the temple and named and circumcised. Since I believe he was born after sundown on 3.13, because of the marker we got on our third and final Great American Eclipse. I believe that day one for John the Baptist would have been on 314. And it only makes sense because 314 is one of God's divine numbers again. It is the number for Pi, 3.14. John the Baptist and his first day was Pi Day. So funny how my old housemate was always telling me when it was Pi Day every year. So this is it, both of those dates. I should have known that God would do this. I couldn't imagine any better signs than these 
for God to have set in the heavens for us to see. On Pi Day and John the Baptist's first day of life. Zoomed in this close, the moon will be moving pretty quickly. And as usual, God knocked my socks off with the moon, Israel, sitting squarely on the line of the waters of Aquarius at 9.11 a.m. that morning. Israel, getting quite a baptism, it seems, at the very time on my timestamp as Jesus' birthday, which would occur exactly 182 days after John the Baptist was born, late in the evening of 313. And then I took a look at what would be John the Baptist's eighth day of life, when it was appointed that a male be presented at the temple for naming and circumcision. John the Baptist was a full-blooded Levite, and his father Zechariah was a temple priest. So there is no doubt that he was presented at the temple in Jerusalem on his eighth day. And there we see Venus, the new bride or church, going through the baptism in the waters of Aquarius, just diving in. John the Baptist was the end of the line, the end of the Levitical priesthood. And when he baptized Jesus, it was the passing of the priesthood to Jesus. There would be no more divine recognition of the old temple priesthood of the Levites. It was over for them. So, after all that I've seen, it is obvious that these events are such huge turning points that of course God is going to set his signs in the heavens. On the morning of John's first day of life, at the time that Jesus would be born six months later, we have the moon, Israel, going through a baptism in heaven. And on the eighth day, when he was named in the temple, Venus, the new church, is getting her baptism in heaven. What's even wilder is that this day of John the Baptist's eighth day is also an exact match to the day this year when Venus the church, or Peter, dove into the waters of Aquarius. These are side-by-side -side screenshots, again over 2,000 years apart. Same exact time and same exact place. Both of these are from Jerusalem at 1611 and on the same dates. On the left is from March 21st, when Venus, the bride or church, or what I now know is symbolic of Peter in John's final chapter, diving into those waters of Aquarius as vial number five is filled with God's wrath. And on the right-hand side is also March 21st on Stellarium date counter, which was the very day that John the Baptist was presented at the temple in Jerusalem to be named. And there is the new church, Venus, diving into the waters for her baptism. Oh, it gets even crazier. Another date we can pinpoint is when Jesus was first teaching in the temple when he was 12 years old. So let's check it out. Since we know from Luke's Gospel, chapter 2, that when Jesus was 12, he traveled to Jerusalem with his family. And when they had fulfilled the days, Jesus tarried behind in Jerusalem while everyone else headed home. We are told that they went one day's journey before figuring out that Jesus wasn't with them. So they turned back. 
And after three days, they found Jesus in the temple, both teaching and asking questions, to the astonishment of all. So, as you can see here, I made a little chart beside this calendar to make sure I had the right year. Jesus would have turned 12 in September of the year 10 AD. So, 11 AD at Passover is the calendar I'm looking for. In the year 11, Passover ended on April 13th. So, according to Luke, they would have found him in the temple on April 16th or maybe 17th. So, I looked at Stellarium to see what was going on around that time. And wouldn't you know, early in the morning on April 16th, there is the moon, Israel, sitting squarely on the line of the waters of Aquarius. Israel getting a major baptism, being fully immersed in the words of Jesus Christ. Little did they know he was their long-awaited Messiah. So, I think that's going to wrap things up for today. I have extended my basic timeline notes page on the front and back ends of it, so if you want to have a look at it, surf over to my website at Patreon, and you can subscribe for free to get my updated timeline. I'm mostly only going out to the 9th of Av with some day counts right now. However, there are some very key looking day counts further than that like this one, the 200 cubits from shore that John mentions after Peter dives into the water. 200 days past the very date that Venus the Church, or Peter, actually did dive into the waters of Aquarius during the filling of the seven vials, gets us to October 7th which is Jesus' current star date birth date. And we know what happened last year on October 7th. However, our next solar eclipse is going to be October 2nd, which has everything to do with St. Peter the Roman. Also, this day count of the 153 fish from the menorah sign to the ninth of Av is pretty concerning right now because those seven apostles fishing around the time of the equinox was definitely when the nets were cast. I made videos four years ago about the seven apostles fishing as the seven constellations that we can see across the horizon around the spring equinox as Jesus is roasting that fish of Pisces at sunrise to put an end to the age of Pisces. So I'm pretty set on what's going on here. And we also have the seven churches standing before God in the heavens as his grand menorah and the Revelation 15 sign exactly 400 days from the opening of seal number seven. One day for every year of God's 400 year biblical cycles of 144,000 days. Hang tight with Jesus, everyone. One thing we all know for sure, and that is today is one day closer to the end.